Our next speaker is uh, Shiju Varghese, and he comes with 15 years of experience. He's from Kochi, and he's been working for over three years in Go. He works currently as an independent consultant, and he loves philosophy. In particular, he, he loves uh, meta-psychology, holistic healing, and uh, I don't want to get too philosophical on it, but uh, he's an author of two books in Go. Of, he's written a uh, web development with Go with A Press and is currently writing Go recipes. Shiju, over to you. Thank you. Yeah. This is a clicky. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, in this session, I am going to be talk about uh, writing HTTP middleware in Go. Uh, when you develop web application, uh, HTTP middleware is an important concept. In Go, you can develop a fully featured and highly scalable web application without leveraging any framework. In most use cases, you don't need any luxurious framework for Go web development. Uh, in such scenario, uh, using HTTP middleware would be really helpful for your uh, Go web development. The primary objective of the session is to uh, give an introduction about uh, what is actually HTTP middleware and how we can simplify Go web programming using uh, HTTP middleware. And finally, we will take a look into Negroni, a third party package for easily working with the HTTP middleware stack. So before diving into HTTP middleware, let's take a look into uh, HTTP handlers. HTTP middlewares are special kind of handlers. So we can start with the uh, HTTP handlers. In Go web programming, the most important components are uh, Servmax and HTTP handlers. Servmax is basically a uh, HTTP request multiplexer or simply a router and handlers serve HTTP requests. Handlers are responsible for writing headers and bodies into uh, HTTP responses. Um, in Go, uh, any object can be a uh, handler if it is satisfies the HTTP handler interface. The HTTP handler interface has a method serve, uh, uh, serve HTTP. So a concrete implementation of handler must provide an implementation of serve HTTP with the signature defined by the handler interface. So uh, what is actually HTTP middleware? We just looked into uh, what is handlers. Uh, even uh, uh, I, as I said earlier, HTTP middlewares are a special kind of handlers. So what is the difference between a, a, a normal handler and a, a HTTP middleware. Um, let's say uh, when you develop a web application, you may need some shared functionality to be executed into uh, some application handlers or into all application handlers. For an example, let's say that you want to log all HTTP requests where writing this logging uh, logic for each and every HTTP request handle impl implementation would be a bit tedious job. So it would be really great having a special kind of handlers to write this uh, shared functionality to be applied into all application handlers or into some specific application handlers. So uh, HTTP middlewares are uh, great for implementing shared behavior behaviors into your web application. So in a nutshell, uh, it's a pluggable and self-contained piece of code that wraps your web application handlers. On the top of uh, 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 your web application handlers, you can provide some shared behavior. You can inject some shared logic. You can extend your HTTP request handling cycle by providing a special kind of handlers. Um, HTTP middlewares are components that work as another layer in the HTTP request handling life cycle, uh, which means uh, you can execute some logic before or after executing 
your normal application handler. <coughs> so uh, this is uh, really good for uh, writing cross-cutting concerns. When you develop uh, web, uh, web application, you may have a lot of cross-cutting concerns such as uh, caching, uh, authorization, authentication, lo logging, etc. So uh, HTTP middlewares are great option to write this kind of uh, cross-cutting concern. Let's say that uh, you want to implement, a, uh, implement an authorization logic before invoking an application handler. Uh, when a when a HTTP request is coming to uh, 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 coming from a authenticated user, you want to invoke application handler. Otherwise, you want to exit from the uh, entire HTTP request handling cycle. So, in this uh, scenario, you can write an auth uh, authorization component as a middleware, which can be applied into all application handler in which you want authorization. So, it's really great for uh, implementing uh, shared functionality. Uh, so before uh, writing our own HTTP middleware, let's take a look into, uh, let's take a look into uh, strip prefix function provided by HTTP standard package. Uh, strip prefix function wraps other handlers and provide, uh, it will uh, strip off a given prefix from the uh, request URLs path. So in this example code block, the built-in uh, file server handler wraps with the uh, strip prefix function. Let's take a look into strip prefix function uh, in the HTTP package. Uh, it accepts a handler as an uh, argument and return a another handler. So. Uh, uh, the, the return handler uh, serve HTTP request by removing a prefix uh, uh, from the given, uh, a, sorry, uh, a HTTP request URLs path. And strip off the prefix string from the request URLs path. So it wraps your application handler. It provides some pluggable, plug, pluggable logic. Uh, and you can uh, execute middleware logic before or after executing your application handler. So we just looked into strip prefix function provided by standard library package HTTP. Uh, let's take a look into how to write uh, our own HTTP middleware. This is a very simple pattern. We simply write a function that accepts a handler as an argument and return a handler. We uh, create a handler uh, instance by creating a handler func type. And uh, in mid when you uh, write middleware, you can write middleware logic logic in before or after executing application handler. So in this uh, code block, in this uh, uh, simple uh, HTTP middleware pattern, we simply accepts a handler as an argument. It's named next. So by uh, calling the uh, serve HTTP method of the uh, incoming handler, you can explicitly invoke the handler. So if you want to write the middleware logic before invoking your application handler, just write the middleware logic before invoking the serve HTTP method. And if you want to write the middleware logic after invoking your application handler, just write the logic after invoking the uh, serve HTTP method. So uh, let's write a uh, simple logging middleware. So based on the pattern uh, we explained uh, in previous slide, we just write a function with uh, a handler as an argument. We can receive a handler as an uh, 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 argument and simply return a handler implementation. So in this uh, code block, uh, we write uh, middleware logic before executing application handler and after executing after handler. So uh, before invoking server HTTP method of the incoming handler, we write some logic. And after invoking the server HTTP method, we are also writing some logic in our middleware.
So in this code block, we are uh, applying the logging middleware, middleware into application handler. So we have couple of handlers, couple of uh, application handlers, uh, which we wrap with our logging middleware. So uh, since uh, middleware function uh, accepts a handler as an argument and return a handler, you can have middleware chaining. This would be really useful when uh, uh, you want to add mo uh, multiple middleware function into application handlers. So here we write a middleware chaining uh, into our uh, index application handler we are adding three middleware functions. So you can have middleware chain because these functions simply accepts an, uh, accepts a handler and return a another handler. And uh, uh, whenever you want to add multiple middleware into application handlers, you need to uh, 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 write middleware chaining like this way. So uh, this is a good start about HTTP middleware, but uh, writing middleware in this way is a bit tedious. For an example, here in this code block, we are adding three middleware function into a an application handler. And let's say your web application has uh, 100 application handlers. So where uh, you need to map the middleware function into uh, uh, function 100 times for each individual application handler. It is a bit tedious job. It's really boring. So it would be great we if we could use some helper library to easily working with the HTTP middleware. So let's take a look into Negroni package. This is a third party package for easily working with the uh, uh, HTTP middleware. You can write uh, middleware with the Negroni and you can easily uh, uh, apply middleware function to your application handlers and you can easily uh, chain your middlewares without any uh, issues. So you can uh, Install Negroni, Negroni from github.com slash codegangsta slash Negroni. It's a really good third party package. If you are not using any uh, framework for your Go web development, Negroni is a really good addition to your uh, 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 Go packages. It is, uh, it's work on the top of uh, standard, library uh, uh, standard library package HTTP. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, yeah, b b for using Negroni package. It's really cool. Um, so it's built on the top of standard library package, HTTP. Uh, it provides uh, some types, uh, its own handler interface, and it, uh, Negroni provides its own handler func type. Uh, you can uh, look more about Negroni from its uh, GitHub page. And I am not going to uh, uh, these types of Negroni. So uh, how to write middlewares with the Negroni? So, uh, so this is a simple pattern for writing uh, uh, middlewares with the Negroni package. So uh, to make a, a middleware with the uh, uh, Negroni package, you need to follow the, uh, uh, you need to convert the uh, functions into negroni.handler func type. So in order to matching with the method signature of handler func, uh, negroni handler func func type, I write the, uh, uh, I write a function with the same uh, signature. Then let's take a look into how to use uh, negroni into your application handlers. So in this code block, uh, we uh, create a Negroni instance by calling the new function. Then, uh, so in, in our previous uh, slide, uh, we, uh, we have uh, written a uh, middleware function, my middleware. It's a normal uh, Go function. We need to convert it as a Negroni handler func type. So we convert uh, uh, my middleware function into Negroni dot handler func type. 
by using the use method of Negroni instance, you can add a uh, middleware function into the middleware stack. When you uh, uh, map a middleware function uh, by using the use method, this will be applied into all application handlers. You don't need to individually map this handler to each individual application handlers. Uh, simply just uh, use the uh, uh, middleware function with uh, the use method. It will applied into all application handlers. So it is really useful. Even uh, you can uh, map a HTTP dot handler implementation to Negroni by calling the use handler function. Here we uh, add a uh, Gorilla Max object into a, uh, uh, into uh, Negroni instance. Negroni is basically a handler implementation, nothing more than that. Uh, so, so here we simply uh, using our uh, uh, my middleware function with the Negroni. Even let's say that uh, we have uh, 100 application handler in this web application. This my middleware function will be applied into all these application handler. You don't need to apply this it indu individually. So when uh, you do this, it will make some problem. Let's say you want to apply middleware function only for some specific routes. By simply using the use uh, method of uh, Negroni, it will be applied into all application handlers. So in many ca use cases, you may need to apply this middleware, middleware function into some specific routes. So in this example code block, we add this uh, uh, a, um, a middleware one, middleware two into a uh, uh, slash admin routes. So you can add uh, a HTTP middleware to some specific URI routes as well. So here is an example code block. Here we have uh, two routes slash users and slash task. Um, here uh, we want to add a uh, uh, middleware authorized to only for a slash task URI. So uh, uh, in the uh, slash users route, we are not adding any middleware. But for uh, slash task routes, we are adding a, a middleware authorized into the path slash task. So you can add. Uh, 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 middleware function to some specific routes. So this is a really cool uh, 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 package. It would be really helpful for your web development. So any questions? So uh, one of the things that I've seen with, uh, you know, using the uh, native uh, uh, middlewares is that uh, when you write, when the last level of uh, uh, the last handler comes in, at that time if any response it starts, it it's even sends a single byte onto the writer. Mm -hmm. It basically uh, sends all the headers which are applicable and uh, your middleware, if it wants to change the response, it can't really change it. So one of the ways in which people usually fight it is using the uh, standard, uh, there's one of the uh, 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 response recorders which is available in the HTTP uh, test package and people use that to record the response and then uh, you know modify it before sending it. Mm -hmm. Have you, uh, do you have any other strategies which you have come across and seen wherein people can actually get a streaming kind of response and you know how they modify it when returning the response. So, uh, can you repeat it? Yeah, so uh, the question is key, in a standard implementation, mm -hmm. as soon as any handler starts to write on the response uh, writer, mm -hmm. uh, Go library will immediately send out the default headers and the response will be channeled to the client. But if any middleware wants to modify the response, it has to do a lot of jugglery right now. One method is to use the response recorder. 
Have you come across any other method in which so, uh, that? Pythagoras is using for testing. Yeah. So I don't feel right using that. Mm -hmm. But if I want to modify the response, for example, my last handler, the main handler, returns a JSON object. Mm -hmm. But I want to transform it to XML before returning it to the client. Mm -hmm. So, what? How? Uh, how can I do it in the best way? No, no, no. So you. So in your example, you say that. So there is a one middleware that. That should be transforming the JSON to XML. Uh, but because the last handler already wrote the response to the writer, mm -hmm. it is already now with the client. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to transform it. So how should I do it? Mm, I didn't get your question. So I think really? what you want to do is discuss so with him carefully outside. On the uh, context, uh, even at any time you can exit from middleware. Uh, you, you can have a better control about uh, middleware. Sure. So, I think we'll take it offline. Yeah, yeah take yeah, take a specific we'll discussion, discussion over beer maybe. So we have a better control over the middleware. Even you can write the logic uh, at any uh, anywhere. Oh, oh. Ah. All right, cool. Thanks, Iju. <laughs> All right, let's do that again. Thanks, Iju. <laughs> All right. Tea break? No? No! <laughs> this is my time. <laughs> it's not tea break yet. So we got one more talk before tea. <laughs>